Well, hello there. Welcome to the On to the Next podcast. I'm your host, Alyssa, and I am so happy you are here. If you are watching on YouTube, you already see that I have a guest with me today. Let's give a warm welcome to Miss Kelly Maxwell. Hello, Hello, Kelly. Thank you for being here today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Can we let them know who you are? Yeah, my name is Kelly Maxwell. I'm a singer-songwriter based right here in Chicago. And yeah, I just, I began this journey in April and this is where I am now, so. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I didn't realize April. Yeah, it's when I officially started. Okay, because I. when my first song was released. Yeah. Cute, so four <laughs> months. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she's four months old. She's still a baby. <laughs> she is. Oh she my is. God, I look like you had a lot more things established. I thought it was at yeah. least a year. Well, so. The thing is, like, that's when I first started actually becoming vulnerable and releasing it. Okay. But it's been a journey before. Yeah. Like, I started how most people do with, like, song covers. Got it. Just kind of building your, like, audience and stuff like that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I actually had started songwriting very young. And okay. And kind of went from, like, journal to music to, yeah, so... Yeah, a lot of a lot of what you see was like demos and stuff just come to life. Got it. So. That's so <laughs> cool. That's so cool. I didn't yeah. even realize it was that yeah. quickly. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, so Kelly and I met because we actually went to the same university. But what's funny is I don't think we spoke. No. <laughs> <laughs> no Which really. is like really <laughs> obnoxious <laughs> thinking about it now. I know we had, you, were you a business major, marketing? Yes, marketing. Okay, yeah. I had a business minor, like marketing focus, all that stuff. So we had a few like business classes together. I do remember you in the classes. I yeah. just don't think we spoke. Yeah, we had like a couple classes together. We just, I guess we're on opposite sides of the room. But uh, yeah, I do we picture. Gotta spread the talent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> That's so yeah, funny. I think this fair, they put me in the middle of all the ten football players. I was uh, yeah, I was always by all the like <laughs> basketball or lacrosse players. Just they the just sprinkled the token few little girls who were in the class because there was always a bunch of guys and like not yeah. enough women in the class. Just because the brain power they had, they <laughs> did have to disperse it. So <laughs> that's yeah. hilarious. So that's but, so funny. But because of social yeah. media, the power of social media, Literally. like we. Like, I saw you post, I think we've always followed each other, maybe. Yeah. But I, when I saw you posting, like, music and stuff, any person who's, like, just trying to do their own thing creatively, I just am naturally, like, drawn to. So I obviously was, yeah. like, watching your journey, and I was like, oh, my God, this would be a dope person to have on. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's perfect because, like, I could probably speak for a lot of people mm-hmm. who are, like, just wanting to, to dive into music and yeah. understand you know what it takes to really like be vulnerable with yourself and put yourself out there yeah Yeah, i'm still i'm brand new to the industry okay but i'm not new necessarily to music yeah which is a whole other two other two beasts to conquer for sure Exactly. but yeah i actually i think i remember because you i think you followed and maybe dm'd my podcast account yeah which was so cute i remember being like (laughs) oh my god so that was like cute that's like how i remember i think that was a few months ago well i'm all for like self-love um, you know, mental health and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So when I saw that, that's exactly what your podcast was about. I'm like, I'm following. Yeah, that was I, so like, cool. <laughs> that was so cool. I literally remember yeah. that like vividly, yeah. which was great. So that's a little like tidbit, guys. Just mm-hmm. reach out to people, DM, send the messages. You never know what can come out of it, um, and just support other creatives. Social that's like makes huge. Possible. That's how music is possible too. Totally. All of my songs. I don't know if you know this either. It's it was all completely done remotely. What do you mean? Remotely? I work. I work with like remote producers. Okay. And mixing engineers and master engineers, and the only thing I did in person was create the idea off of my guitar, and then obviously the songwriting bit of it. Uh-huh. And then uh, with all that combined talent, we took it to the studio, like a local studio, where I could actually record studio vocals. Okay. And that was that was literally sent back to like remote producers. So. That's it's, really it's cool. Through social media. That's really so, cool. And you yeah. could do it anywhere around the world. Anywhere around Were the world. Were other producers not in Chicago? No. I mean, there are obviously yeah, a lot. Yeah, of course. But, but not your the people. ones that I currently work with. Got yeah. it. Like, That's so cool. Yeah. I mean, it just goes to show, like, there's so many tools out there. Other yeah. than just social media, too. Like, you can have a studio session and either put it through Zoom or, like, Discord. Yes. Or something that's, like, readily accessible and free to mm-hmm. people. 
it's just so cool. And, you know, it's great for the relationship building, too. Yeah. Because I've, like, nurtured a lot of really great relationships out of, like, the the music side of it. Yeah, and that comes with, like, you like used your resources and you were your own advocate. Yeah. It sounds like. And that's, like, mm-hmm. key because if you don't have those, like, qualities and, and you're a people person, like, you know how to talk and all that stuff. So, like, yeah. that's all, like, helpful, obviously, to get you in. Yeah. But I was honestly just so excited, too. Oh, yeah, like, it like, is when, exciting. Yeah. When, when some people would come to me with, like, a song demo idea, I'd be like, oh, my God. Like they want me on this. Like, how am I gonna? How am I gonna actually like elevate this vocally and and lyrically and make it like pop? And stuff? Yeah, I do want to get into your music, but I have well, I have two questions. One, okay, I'll just say this one first. One, who do when you take your pictures? Like, who do, takes your pictures? Is that you? Um, uh, the one, are you talking about the train station ones? Yeah, like I've, whatever you posted more recently yeah. I commented on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually I was working with uh, a photographer in Chicago. Okay. I, yeah, I found through social media. Huh. Yeah, <laughs> no, I saw, I'm like, why is she literally a model? <laughs> you have like the perfect oh. like like face structure, like with your posing. No, <laughs> you guys have to go look at her Instagram. We'll plug all the Instagrams and stuff. But this, the pictures you posted recently, <laughs> you're like, I'm a shy girl. <laughs> the <Stop>. pic- <laughs> you're like but tell me more no the <laughs> pictures you posted recently i'm like oh my god this is like high fashion yeah i i think it just like i basically um met this photographer online chicago based. yeah i really loved his quality stuff like just the color grading and the quality mm-hmm. and he had a huge camera there with yeah him, and i just came to him with an idea i was like hey so for my song release i have this idea this vision I sent him like Pinterest, like, yeah, of course, references yeah, references and stuff, and then I just had an outfit planned. I brought my guitar, um, and then we just went to I think like the Red Line or something like uh-huh. that, where they had an elevator downstairs, and I was like, "This makes for some really cool pictures." And he knew how to pose me too, yeah, which is great. So, because I was like, "Uh, I'm running out of poses. I don't, <laughs> I don't do this." Yeah, so. <laughs> no, yeah, that's yeah. cool because they like obviously work with a lot of people, so they kind of know what visions yeah. can come to life. Yeah, and at the end, it was really cool because he was like, "Yeah, definitely hit me up for like more stuff like this. I love things like this. I'm more, I'm more like corporate." Okay. Based. really so, cool he likes he likes the creative idea that's okay. awesome yeah. that's good to know i might have to ask you for his info yeah whenever yeah. i'm doing yeah. like little shoots and stuff yeah because um, in the turnaround was crazy i got the yeah. pictures back the next day like, yeah that's crazy maybe actually four hours or something oh my like, gosh okay. that's All awesome right. yeah like he was excited which yeah. is cool it was my first time doing something like that too and it was a great experience like i think in an hour or so we were able to get like 40 pictures yeah. done and then i was just able to pick the ones i wanted mm-hmm. so yeah cool. that's awesome yeah he's like bring a cigar <laughs> like, oh my gosh cool. that's cute like, okay. that's <laughs> awesome yeah. yeah that's yeah they looked so good they totally like fit what I, like the vibes you're going for which was like obviously totally. important to like match that totally yeah. yeah i mean that was just i mean i think like you had mentioned um off camera and stuff like oh what are like some of the things you do like on your own like because i'm i'm doing this completely by myself i don't have management or anything uh-huh. like that but i'm a very visual person so yeah like, when i think of releases i think of them very visually mm-hmm. so i was like i have to do a little photo shoot Oops, <laughs> oh my god that is like crucial yeah and it yeah. makes your quality look more professional too exactly yeah and it's like evident in the song like you hear the train sound yeah the song. like it's about leaving you know like so. Yeah, <laughs> that's so creative, and you're using yeah. the resources of being in chi- being in Chicago, free yes. location, yeah. which is like mm-hmm. very hard to find sometimes, yes. and just kind of guerrilla style style like yeah. <laughs> filming or taking photos and stuff, which is yeah. really cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you have to go all in. Yeah, right? yeah, so just go full out whenever I happens. Was, like, happens. So nervous because. I'm not used to like the attention of people like looking at me and in public l- yet. Uh-huh. So like, <laughs> you're, like doing all these crazy poses, and I was like, "There's no people. There's no people here. Nope. Just focus on the camera." Uh, <laughs> yeah, because pe- everyone's in their own world. Like, yeah. you just can't mm-hmm. like think like that. You know, which is I good. Think, I think okay, they're gonna like think what the hell was that, and then they're gonna walk in like, and not remember totally, it. or so. they'll think you're someone like super important and like. Yeah, like, guys, it's a bit. I like, just have to run which, with it. Yeah, no, literally. 
yeah I've, I've always thought of like i love that like people who interview people like on the streets or like doing their commute or whatever it is and like i feel like there's a clever way i can like do that yeah in some way yeah. but that's a whole other journey i've been thinking about <laughs> which is off topic yeah. that'd be very cool especially because there's a lot of people who have like so many different things going on with their life that, yeah like, mention anything that's related to your podcast and just have them talk yeah cool. i have a few questions that i feel like i can go and ask every person and like we get a cool answer oh absolutely a little tiny mic moment you mm-hmm. know <laughs> you know people even do this with music so much like i've seen so many creativity on the internet lately uh-huh. of, i i can't remember his name but there's this guy who literally sits by this bench and it's a very interactive case like he'll have his guitar and then this poster board that says like uh talk to me about your biggest like problem or your biggest insecurity and then they they talk about it and then he he gets up and stands behind the stage and starts singing them like a hopeful song Aww. and i'm like that oh, wow. is the energy we need <laughs> that's so that's like really creative and yeah. to think on your feet like in that moment which is really cool it's really engaging to people too, yeah you know like everyone's going through some type of problem of their own and that just goes to show like music is so healing yeah totally in many different ways totally yeah yeah. Well, I do have to ask you before we get more into this world is um, what era are you in right now? I'm in my rock star girl era. Period. <laughs> that's so cute. I love that. OK, well, we didn't even need it. That's enough said right there. Thank you. I love that. Um, so going back to the basics, what. So you kind of mentioned already about the music and stuff and like how you've like done this little journey yeah. what made you finally realize like i just have to do it and like who cares if i'm nervous or if i'm scared or like what like was your final thing that was like this is it i'm doing this the message behind everything i was doing okay. like i felt that it was so healing to me and the songwriting part and the whole like song creation from start to finish i'm like this actually could heal someone possibly Uh and i think it was bigger picture that like i was thinking outside of me for a second and being like i just want a lot of people to resonate with like this type of music Mm -hmm. and um i felt like you know there's opportunities for me to sound maybe a little bit different than like your average like pop star yeah (laughs) yeah like it's songs with meanings like they're all completely written by me And then I have very talented producers that I work with that kind of elevate it and bring it to life. Mm -hmm. I usually just start with like a a simple little guitar uh, chord progression with my vocals, with the song I'm writing, send it over. They come back with something beautiful. So that's so cool. But I knew I just wanted like it's ingrained in me music. Yeah. So that's I knew it was going to be something big one day. Um obviously it's still new but yeah no no no. but that's a good yeah. perspective mm-hmm. and did you always play guitar did you learn on your own like how did that happen yeah i i started when i was like 10 i believe um i there were some neighborhood kids growing up that like had guitars and i was like the first time i saw one and laid eyes on it i was like oh shit, i need one of these for myself this is so cool this is fun like they were electric i think too okay um but my dad got me uh, and my mom got me a fender acoustic okay the first time Aww. i was like oh my god so i just started learning first before i even sang or wrote or anything yeah like that. um but i started learning actually in person like there were some lessons i took okay that were pretty helpful but then after a little bit it just became too expensive and then i just started getting the hang of it so then i became a little bit self-taught and then after a while i got the hung the hang of it and stuff like that so yeah that's awesome yeah. and then did you move do you play piano or anything else um or? i d- i play keyboard very roughly but i say that i don't know i i really just take like the chords i learned from the guitar and yeah hear it on the keyboard yes and you can like yeah. trans yeah. transfer that uh, over don't but. ask me about music theory <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Okay, I won't. Ask me what key my song is in. I oh my! <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I love that. I'm That's just awesome. The vibe. Yeah, no, literally, just putting it out there. Mm-hmm. Did you grow up in Chicago? No. I was I, gonna say, where did you? Where are you from? So there's like, I I like lived around a, a lot of different states actually growing okay. up. Okay. I was born in Wisconsin, and then we my family moved because my dad's job. But okay. My family moved to Michigan and North North Carolina, Pennsylvania. And then I went to Chicago for school. Especially. Yeah. Yeah. But I also have a lot of family around here. So I, okay. just, I wanted a city experience kind of. Yeah. Thing. And everyone, everyone where I grew up mostly in Pennsylvania was like Penn State or like Pittsburgh, like somewhere like kind of 
I don't know. I just wanted a different local to that area. But um, okay, yeah, I don't know. There was something about Chicago I always wanted to to explore more. But I loved it so much that I moved back here. (laughs) Yeah, there's so much to do. Literally, everything, especially in the creative world, like there's so much like love and creatives in Chicago, which I think is really like special. And it's like it's a blessing to be in a big city. Yeah, when we're in these industries. Oh, absolutely. There's just so much opportunity, like. Just trying to gain, uh, you know, those relationships with, Mm -hmm. like, as it pertains to, like, music and live performances and stuff, too. Yeah. There's just so many connections to be made with, like, just basic, like, bar owners and stuff. Yeah, you're right. Where you can just, like, play weekly and then, you know, you'll be set there. Or, like, they also have uh, this intimate concert space, you know, so far. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So I was going to actually sign up for that because as an artist, like, they'll have, like, these pop-up like concert spaces for you to perform it i'm like yeah. that's so cool it's bohemian style you, you have out. to yeah yeah and you you don't even know who the lineup is like who's performing like, okay as the audience and you're told the location i believe it's like 30 hours before the show okay so it's that's really, really cool, cool. It's, like, it's like a speakeasy yeah literally like, music there's oh. probably such cool people that go there too yeah. and that who would like want to find you and like Like, follow you, you know? You literally never know. It's, like, always crazy with music and, like, social media, too. Yeah. I was able to connect with a lot of people that I didn't think I would with music, too. Okay. There was this person I was following for a while. Her name's Anne Klein. Shout out to you, Anne Klein. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But, no, she, like, she's very inspirational to me because she does a lot of live performances. Okay. And, like... I think moved and is able to perform a lot in Florida and stuff and okay. gained her following to like 10,000 and I was like oh wow I very much want to follow in your footsteps yeah <laughs> and because I finally put my music out there she reaches back out to me she's like so dope like your music's Aww. amazing whoa <laughs> that's so cool I think. yeah that's so cool yeah. yeah I wanted to ask you about your your music sound because I feel like you have definitely always vibes but is it, like, more alternative, would you say? Would you say it's, like, how would you describe your music? Um, I would describe it as, like, I guess genre-based. It's more R&B pop. Okay. With I could see that. Okay. Notes of, like, alternative. Because, mm-hmm. like, I'm pretty fluid with genres. Like, yeah. Like, I'm not scared to go genre hopping. Like, just get <laughs> songs out there. Yeah. And an I experiment. It's pretty cool. It's, 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 it says a lot about, like, experimenting as an artist yeah. and stuff, too. But... Yeah, that's how I describe myself. I also write a lot about relationships and healing and escapism and, yeah, just what what that kind of looks like in song form. Yeah. So. Yeah, I was listening a few days ago to when I to (laughs) U-Haul, and that song, for like three days, that chorus was stuck in my head. It's so, it's like so just like, it's just, yeah, you can't get it out. Not in a bad way. It's just like so like, and it's it's very fluid, like you said, which is obviously the goal in your songwriting. You want that stuff to make sense and to be in someone's brain for multiple days. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, because then they go back to it. They tell their friends like, oh my God, this ridiculous song I just came across. Yeah, (laughs) no, it's so cool. Yeah, Yeah, you guys listening like have to go listen because all... (laughs) <laughs> because it's just it, it's very vibey like totally vibey like all of them yeah, yeah. and i agree with the beats and stuff like i can see yeah. the r&b side totally yeah that's awesome that's the goal like i wanted uh all my songs to have their own vibe but still be catchy mm-hmm. and still be vulnerable still be resonating to people like anyone could come across it and find it connecting in some way mm-hmm. They're like oh yeah i just like literally went through something like this and like added to their playlist yeah but it's so cool and yeah. i saw you've been posting you're getting like a good amount of streams yep which is yeah. like so exciting yeah it's real it's surreal it's surreal. that's so cool how did you get to that do you think well, so I think like building up your own audience goes mm-hmm. a long way at the start of it because, you know, once you start building like an actual fan base and then you promote your music, you'll already have a, like a guarantee totally. of people who will back your stuff and listen to your stuff regardless of like how you'll sound, but just because they support you. Yeah, they like you as a person. Like yeah, you're likable. They like you as a person, yeah. so they're going to listen to the song. Um, and stuff like that yeah. but that's how it first started and then I was like I I follow a lot of like music marketers and stuff like that Smart. online yeah and just like how to go about it so I did do like a paid camp a uh, paid search campaign okay for one of the uh, uh songs and stuff like that actually it was U-Haul okay and I mixed it with 
constant posting. So yeah. I would kind of like hit a certain target and like just see what it what it would do. But organically, I was able to understand my target audience better. Cool. It reached a certain amount of people better. And organically, it was able to be put on like, I believe, 10 popular like playlists. That's what yeah, is that's like what's game changing. Made. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. And also like I worked in paid search and stuff like that for a yeah. long time. So actually, I actually I knew how that would work, like setting up the ad campaigns. OK. And stuff like that, just because I knew my audience at that point. Yeah. Um, but it was really, really, really cool to see uh, kind of the traction that it's gained and, yeah. and who it's impacted. Because I also did a lot of the promotion on TikTok, too. Yeah, I saw, yeah. I was like, people love tea and drama. Yes! <laughs> no, literally, <laughs> anything in that world. Yeah. Song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so basically, this was something that, um, it had, like, a crazy backstory, and I'm like... You hear so many people in this niche space, like in the queer community, talking about being a U-Haul lesbian. A lot of people don't even know what that is. But it's basically when things go so well on your dates that you, you're just ready to move in. You're literally ready to move in. It could be in a span of one day, three days, ten hours, depending on how good the conversation <laughs> goes. <laughs> but I was like, let me break the stigma here for the people who don't feel like the relationship went well and who want to actually take their time and be and be cautious and be slow uh -huh. and be okay with knowing that it just wasn't something that worked out but let me make it comical it was clever funny. like yeah. the not a u-haul is clever yeah. like i knew <laughs> i knew like what the like stereotype was or however you would call it yeah. um and so i like chuckled when i was like oh that's clever <laughs> like i like i like got the point <laughs> yeah, yeah. but yeah explaining that on tiktok also like educates people exactly. about like that the community yeah. and then also those who are in the community it's show it's showing the representation which is important and speaking on those those experiences which is yeah. so important yeah and i think like with the success it's had in it being my second song mm -hmm. it's only like gained oh yeah a bigger uh you know audience of people who are like the like-minded people who i was trying to target these totally people. yes it's yeah. all yeah absolutely yeah but yeah yeah i don't know it's been a really really cool experience so far but to and also it, make it a trending sound was cool. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. All of that is just so cool. Yeah. To get to that, and it's only been a few months, so totally, like, it's only the beginning, like yeah. you said. I didn't even plan for this, but when I first started working on this song with uh, a remote producer, and she's also uh, queer-friendly. Okay. <laughs> but, so, we were having a laugh, like, producing this song together. But um, this was actually started last November, and it just so happened we wrapped everything up. I was able to upload it after mixing and stuff uh, on June, in June. So it was like Pride Month. Oh, my God. Home. That's perfect. It was perfect That's timing. great <laughs> for marketing <laughs> purposes. Like, oh wow. That's really cool. Yeah, it's like, let me put JoJo's shining face on one of Oh, my things. gosh. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> OMG, send yeah. it to her, see what oh happens. God, yeah, no, it, it, something happened, so. Yeah, <laughs> that's so cool, that's really, mm -hmm. that's really, like, clever for future stuff now, you can plan it to be, like, around mm -hmm. those months, yeah. which is cool. I just love making content really fun, too. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be every, uh, every basic, like, stereotypical artist who's like, well, if you like this, then you'll like, then you'll like, yeah. like, and then just post, like, lyrics. I want it to be a little bit more meaningful, and I'm like, yeah. have you ever heard about this? And, like, just create content, and if people like the content, they're going to stay on the page and be like, oh, wait, what's this song? You know? Yeah, and it's, and it's clever, and I feel like I, I'm someone, at least, who, like, really appreciates sarcasm. So any <laughs> yeah, type yeah. of, like, clever, like, witty comments or jokes or inside jokes mm -hmm. you have with the whole TikTok page or whoever it is, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that also makes mm -hmm. people think, like make you more of like a person yeah. and make them like you as a person, which is important. Mm -hmm. I've also noticed like my following specifically on TikTok, they're, they tend to be readers. Like they okay. like, yes. have the content posted as like photo carousels, yeah. like, the text so that they can read it because they, they, they perform better. They like it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, let me just like create a little story for you guys. And <laughs> if it works, it works. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. <laughs> Okay, so I did want to talk on, obviously, like, your experience as to why you're doing all this is for, like, the greater good, <laughs> for the lack of better words. Yeah. But um, for new creatives and new artists in any any field mm -hmm. wanting to start something new, what were some challenges that you had to overcome before, like, fully allowing yourself to be public? Mm. Uh, definitely vulnerability is one, mm -hmm. because 
I mean, it's just a part of you that's releasing it out into the world. You never know what the traction is going to be like. You never know how it's going to perform. Yeah. And just like fear, the fear of the unknown and the fear of not knowing where to start. Yeah. Like there's so many artists out there. Like it's overwhelming if you're like brand new to this like industry, just the steps that you have to take just to even release one song. Yeah. And stuff like that. And you're, you're taken seriously when you actually release a song. Yes. So. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think there's, like, a big imposter syndrome there where you're just, like, no, it's it's not for me. Like, I'll never make it. Like, the self-sabotage mm-hmm. is real. But then once you actually put it out there and can see the traction it's gaining, like, for the greater good, yes, that's one of the reasons. But also, I just want to be able to do this full time. Yeah. And have it support my, my living. And stuff yeah, like that 100%. Too. And I don't know why I always thought this way, but I was, like, making it big looks so different to so many people. Yes. Like making it big, I think, in most people's eyes are like, oh, popularity, as big as Chaperone, mm-hmm. things like that. But making it big could literally be, okay, I posted a couple songs, I landed a couple live gigs weekly, and I'm able to support my income. Yes. I'm in my house. Boom. Yeah. That's and that's the comp- <laughs> Yeah, and that's perfect. And that's, if that's your thing every and like, it's like the celebrities will come out and be like oh i knew i made it big when all my bills were paid for or like all my debt was exactly. covered like just those little things is like a big deal to people and some yeah. do it just for the fame and then the money comes or like mm-hmm. whatever it is so that's a good way of putting it like you're you you obviously the end goal is to be as big as you want to be but like you said having just a full-time gig of being able to go and perform in different spots in the city, going yeah. home, be doing it all over, over again without having like a nine to five yeah. is like the goal and the dream. That is the goal and the dream. And I think like it can be intimidating to some people because, well, I have that background in marketing. So yeah. I, I might know what the content calendar would look like and to create a schedule for myself. Because I feel some people um, want to just jump into it, but they're scared. They don't know what it's going to be like. But it's okay to sit in that moment and be like, well, what are the lessons you learned from mm-hmm. this release? Go back yeah. and then take notes and then make it better for the next one. Make it better for the next one. That's constantly what I'm thinking about. I'm like, how can I actually dive in and make something so great the next time around? Or and better? that's important. And not just staying stagnant to, like, what worked. Like, you can always yeah. try new creative routes. And then you can always go back to what worked if you have yeah. to. But, yeah. Yeah. And, like, it's not always, like, a failure. Like, if if your song got, like, less streams or something like that, that's not a failure. That's just, like, a little road bump. Yeah. The important part is being consistent. Yeah. So. I was, um, I went to, I, like, was listening to this um, content creator on Instagram, and she was, like, when I was starting off, I was, like, beating myself up if I didn't get, like, more than 10,000 views if I didn't hit triple yeah. double digits with the views she's like until I realized I have 500 followers my reel got 2,000 views that's a viable reel for me I reached 1,500 extra people that I don't have following me and then if I just keep that mindset then the 500 grows to 1,000 followers then it grows to 2,000 and then until now she's at over a million which is insane but like it just shows like giving yourself grace in the sense of like hey if you have 1,000 followers and you're reaching 3,000 every reel you post you're doing something right you are you just got to keep seeing what you can do to get better and to like get a larger audience if that's what you want yeah. I think people al- also, like, on TikTok specifically, mm-hmm. they're like, how do I get out of the 200-view jail? Yeah. This and that. And I'm like, that's, like, an imposter syndrome type thing. But you're also, you're reaching 200 people each post. Yes. I was like, I was like, I literally posted three posts the other day that just got 200, but that was, like, 800 in one day. I'm yeah. not mad about that. <laughs> yeah, and then you're still reaching those <laughs> yeah. people. And even if it's 20 views, like, someone in that 20 views is like, wow, and they save it. And they look it's back at it later. Thing. Yeah, and that's why you do it. Like, it, yeah, I think that that can be a very self-harming way to look at it. Like, mm-hmm. if you're just looking at the numbers, because it's about the meaning. Sure, like you'll have off days, just like anything. Like anything in life is literally a roller coaster. It has its ups and downs. It has its middles, but um, you don't want to stick in the middle. So maybe it's good to have a down day, mm-hmm. to have like a 200 view post day, because the next day you might have a 15,000 view. Yeah, and everything is about averaging and yeah consistency and yeah yeah and, ev- <laughs> and consistency is a word everyone in this industry says and it can it's, it's, it gets so true. it's just so true but it, it can get daunting so like you can give yourself a break you can be yes. like hey you know what after 5 p.m i literally am not touching my phone like i want to go on a walk or whatever it is but like just remembering like okay or i'll do like a lot of like batching but i'll like 
like schedule out like three posts yeah. for like a few days so I can like breathe and like work on another other stuff and then just go back and I know like something's being posted in some way. I was just gonna say yeah like you could have literally like a content filming day yeah in a content editing day um in like the beginning of the month where like everything's all set you just need to like pick from your camera roll and post it yeah so that like during that type of day okay cool it's just gonna take me a minute to post that day and then the mm-hmm. rest of the day I have to recharge my energy and think of the next great thing yeah so yeah 100 percent. but yeah. definitely consistency is key <laughs> they say that too because of algorithms yes and, that's and literally what's changing for social media too like for instagram specifically like obviously its biggest competitor is tiktok and it mm-hmm. wants to highlight reels specifically so i follow a lot of these like um like i said the music advertisers mm-hmm. or music marketers and they're like post one reel a day it could be like one that's door opening or it could be one that's like audience building in uh-huh. there. So like uh, you could post covers, remixes, stuff like that. And that's literally like just inviting people in and engaging. But then you post your own song or you post like uh, real content that's like a day in my life or something. Yeah. Like that. So then they get to know you yeah. after the cover. Mm hmm. But it, it just keeps people engaged, I think. Yeah. yeah. And I... That seems daunting. <laughs> it, it's a lot. I mean, <laughs> for someone, like, I I, just, I post, like, a lot, and I post a lot of, like, my personal life and, like, my day-to-day life, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it, it is a thing, though, having to have the right people in your circle who are okay with, like, hey, before we eat this meal, I need a photo of it. <laughs> like, those <laughs> yeah. little things of having someone be like, hey, wait, that's a good picture. Like, go back. Like, I'm going to film you walking. Or, like, whatever it is. What I call is, like, I need B-roll of my life. Yeah. If you're familiar with the phrase B-roll, like um, when you watch a show and it like cuts to like this landscape of Chicago before it goes into the the house or so whatever it is, like that landscape of Chicago showing where the setting is is like the B-roll. So I like to film everyday life things, and it's just me just eating, drinking coffee, f- uh, filming, video editing, whatever it is, mm-hmm. just the most mundane things. I can just add into a bunch of little clips yeah. and make it into a bunch of different videos. It makes it appealing, and you can reuse and recycle. <laughs> Mm-hmm. in a way you yeah. can yeah especially yeah. with things that we did well in the past if it's been over a year and you haven't you that one got 10,000 views you can re- repurpose it and yeah. find a new way to create it and you have a new audience it's been a year not everyone's gonna remember or yeah. not everyone's has seen that yet yeah it's kind of crazy too like a video that performs really well that you structured perfectly like that it's always something noteworthy to go back to and figure out okay yeah. wait, what was it about this video that my followers really mm-hmm. liked or that my non-followers were attracted to yeah because it's like that's something that i really leaned into on tiktok yeah i was like okay uh maybe like a year's worth of like the tiktok covers i got over like a thousand followers but then like i reached like four thousand follower mm-hmm. category once i literally posted <laughs> a picture of me and then a poem (laughs) yeah (laughs) it is crazy crazy but i leaned into it i was like okay let me just do the same thing the next day same thing yeah yeah okay well it's working (laughs) yeah Yeah. i'm like let me do another picture like this and then instead of a poem it's gonna be my song lyrics and then it's gonna have my song perfect and the audio yeah it it got like some of them got over fifty thousand views it's like yeah whoa if it's working it's working <laughs> yeah i was like okay my audience is readers <laughs> yeah yeah that's what you said earlier yeah and i know the videos we're talking about um yeah it's a whole thing but i definitely know it's there's so many resources you can find any of this information by just googling like best time to post on instagram Literally, best yeah. like and there's so many resources so i feel like in this industry and being a creative or being an entrepreneur or like having to market yourself or your brand or your company like there are resources to make it done Mm -hmm. and not everyone has the time to do it i understand that but even a a couple hours a day like can be game changing yeah and it uh, it doesn't even have to take a crazy amount of brain power like Mm -hmm. speaking on like the the music industry specifically in terms of content wise you can literally follow someone that you really uh, admire or like that is doing very successful that's similar to your music style yeah and see what they're doing what what's all the hype yeah you know totally stuff like that and just obviously tweak it to yourself yeah to make yourself seem more unique yeah but obviously i know then you can become into this like comparative uh realm that can be mm-hmm. like comparison is the thief of joy and then you're like ah but yeah sometimes you do have to compare yourself though to other artists to see where you start 
and then figure out how do I elevate myself to change. Yes, I do agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it's a lot. But a lot of that also comes with, like, knowing your own value and, like, your own worth and, like, hey, Mm -hmm. even if this person who's started the same day as me is doing better, it's, like, that's meant for her right now or for him right now. And my my thing is separate you know mm-hmm. like to to know like you're still worth it and you still have the value and what you're trying to create and put out there yeah absolutely i think like a big thing too is like the music industry is all about like how can i get on playlists mm-hmm. that's like the big game and like you have to compare yourself to know where you fit like what playlist yeah a hundred percent hundred percent and um you know how can i get there like who can I talk to? Who can I speak with? What is my track record now? Yeah. And now that I've been on a couple playlists, that is like a good pitch for me. Mm-hmm. And once I start performing live, which is hopefully soon. <laughs> yeah. Oh my uh, gosh. Then it's it'll so just exciting. Be another thing, and then like obviously PR will back it too. Yeah. All that, and then also like if you're performing live, like the bars or wherever it is are going to promote. Yeah. like singers and yeah musicians coming in mm-hmm. and like we said earlier you'll meet those like-minded people which is really game-changing yeah for like what you're trying to do i think the biggest thing for me too was like before i even wanted to do like live performing which i do want to do um it was so important for me to establish like an online presence and also be able to actually have a place for people to go back and listen yes to because like what good is your song if like the people can't go back and hear it you know they're just gonna forget about it mm-hmm. or like have it stored in their camera roll somewhere from that night out yeah and then never, <laughs> go, know, never go no, back no, to no, look at it this girl swear she's good <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's like a fo- like a video of them like shaking or it's blurry or whatever it is yeah that's super important is having somewhere to go like for the follow-up mm-hmm. and you have that on tiktok and instagram on spotify apple music yeah. all that stuff yeah, yeah. So it's like it's like strategy in place. So. Mm-hmm. But it looks different for everybody. It does. So. Yeah, and everyone's goals and angles no are shade different. To you guys who perform live who don't have anything out. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> YouTube and SoundCloud is just as good. Yeah, <laughs> YouTube also can pay some good money <laughs> once you blow up, yes. which is always the goal too. Yeah. yeah. So obviously a lot of your music and everything is relationship based like we talked about. So I did want to ask you a bit about like inspirations, how that's working. If I remember correctly, you're also in a long distance relationship. That's correct. Okay. So if you're comfortable <laughs> at a long distance experience, yeah, I would love to hear about because that is like a whole other beast in itself. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, but yeah, first to touch on that, yeah, a lot of my music, literally every, every piece of my music is like relationship based, whether or not it was like a, a romantic relationship uh-huh. I was in or like a family relationship yeah. or something. Um, I find it's personally just the easiest for me to write about. Okay. And I feel it's just so relatable. Like so many people have relationships that come and go. Totally. People have great relationships that they just want to hold on to. Mm -hmm. And it's that hope and stuff. But yeah, it's the balance of all of that, that I like to just juggle right, right on and then release. But, um. Yeah, some of my, like, all of my songs that you've heard are all about relationships. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, what made you, okay, I I get this question a lot, being on a podcast, like, with my podcast. Mm -hmm. People are like, if you're, if I, I, when I talk about, like, relationships or boys, like, for me, when I'm in that world, people are like, don't they know who you're talking about? Or, like, Mm -hmm. they kind of get, like, did you ask this person to talk about them? And, like, Mm -hmm. they kind of get, like like sussed out maybe i don't know but i and i've had a couple boys reach out and be like oh my god is this about me and it's like funny but if i'm talking about a boy in a positive way like you'll know lots of love if i'm yeah. talking about a boy in a negative way you'll probably also know <laughs> and like whatever i would tell him to the face or i might have already told him to the face or it's just my own reflections and my own experiences they can come on and tell me theirs and they can say i was the best or the worst and i would be fine that's their own experience you know what i mean mm-hmm. so for you have you had any like backlash if you are writing about a person no okay that's because uh i strictly am no contact with a lot of the okay people that i have written about uh and that i do write about and stuff like that um or like you know just like the stuff that you don't see like the demos that i have yeah ready to be released sometime um yeah no they're they're all they're all uh built to be pretty vague Okay. Um, so I never mention like names or anything, yeah, of like, course. Too personal. Yeah, I won't do a name either. But no, I, I yeah, get it's more just like they'll know if they hear it, they'll know. But like if yeah. they don't, then they don't. They don't. They 
then it wasn't about them. <laughs> <laughs> or they won't realize because they maybe aren't self-aware of the situation. They want it to be about them. Yeah, right? <laughs> They're making it more dramatic than it is, and, like, literally, that had nothing to do with yeah. you. <laughs> oh, yeah, because it could, that's, that's the beauty of it. It could be so vague that I'm like, okay, I'm queer, wrote about a U-Haul. Could be about anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> could that's be. so funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, no, it's, uh, it's just something that I write about because it's, like, my songwriting book is, is just as good as a journal to anyone else. Like, yes. It's, like... Yes. People write about their relationships all the time. Totally. In like maybe poem form or mm-hmm. just free thoughts yep. that are down on a piece of paper. But I took it an extra step to be vulnerable and, and release it. Um, but no, I'm, I strictly keep a lot of that still private. Yeah. Because it's like, yeah, it's just a fun song, but I know that people are going to relate to it. So. Yeah. Okay. No, I have not gotten any backlash. Though. All right. Well, <laughs> that's good to know. I had yeah. someone call me and be like, did you like... Was this about so and so? And I was like, literally, I'm 24. If you think that's the only person I've ever spoke to, then like, that's your own narrative. Like, do your thing. Yeah. Like that yeah. could have. It was the most like <laughs> vid general experience too. It's like a boy. He was rude, and I moved on. Like that could be about anyone. <laughs> like you know. Yeah. So that I agree with the vagueness, but yeah. also if the shoe fits. I like to say that a lot. Yeah. Like you can reflect if you think it's about you in a negative way, and also or the talk purpose. to me about it. Yeah, the purpose of it. You s- you talk about it because you know it's going to help a lot of people, and not yeah. because you want it to be directed towards. Oh this my one god, person. no! And I that's don't. That's how I do use it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I have like a running list of like things I experience, and it's not like I went on a date once, and the f- on the first date, the guy was like, "Oh, are you going to use me for your podcast?" And I'm like, first of all." He wishes. I'm like, first of all, <laughs> that was a weird question. Are you hoping I do? Whoa. And my, I think my answer was like, if you give me something to talk about, like I will. But like, don't, I'm not going out of my way to like make you like this facade or this character. You know what I mean? But it's <laughs> 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 they just want to tell their friends like this girl talked about me in a podcast. But like those little things are like cringy, and I'm like, now I'm not. Because, well, I just did right now, I guess. But, no, <laughs> I'm like, damn it. No, just kidding. No, but um, I think, uh, yeah, I just think that it's, it's like, I'm not talking about it to, like, talk bad about you or to, like, ruin yeah. you. It's literally to be like, hey, this happened. And, girls, if this guy stands you up, it's not your fault. Like, you you yeah. are still worth it. Like, that's not your problem. You know what I mean? Like, it's more for that. message out of it. Thank you. you that's my end goal. Time, so. yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, like, I, I don't ever release something in hopes of like oh like this was oh no my revenge no and like you're, you're going down with the song <laughs> like no. yeah no not no. at all like i never ever mention anything too personal it's really just i like to keep it vague if you know you know there's like a little bit of a twist yeah in like, and gin and lime like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny and just yeah. the general concepts Yes, Everyone has yeah. relationships, like you said, no matter who it's with, whether it's friends, romantic, family, like you mm-hmm. have those experiences and we're just talking about them. Yeah. That's and all doing it in a public, vulnerable, exposing yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our What's choice. Wrong with yeah. That? <laughs> it's twenty twenty four, we can do that. <laughs> you listen. You yeah. scream. <laughs> I'm gonna have that next one ready. <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> so okay, um now with your relationship that you're currently in, is it this person is are they comfortable with past things being talked about in video in music Mm -hmm. are they obviously i'm guessing they have to be supportive if you guys are together so how has that journey been well so she was so supportive like out the start like actually she was with me before i even actually released and hit hit go so like she's been literally my number one supporter has streamed my music has created a playlist of like uh, like in my rock star girlfriend era, and, like, like, I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm awkward, what? That's so cute. Yeah, but I obviously know that it can be uncomfortable. Yeah, like I tried to put myself in the perspective of her and be mindful of her and very demure. <laughs> <laughs> You're so classy. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. like just understanding that. Wait, okay, this might sound a little bit hurtful that I s- that I just released a song about someone, but um, I think it's like the key thing is. It was in my notebook, like, years ago. That's a, that's the so biggest it's just thing. So that it's released now. Totally. Or, like, it's just getting tuned recently now. But totally. we have had talks about this because I was, like, I was in the other end, and I was, like, uh, are you uncomfortable with this? Like, Yeah. Because if it did bother her, I probably wouldn't have released some of the songs that I did. Okay. Or, um, 
not that I like need to get her approval because yeah, like, we talked you want about that before the support, yeah, 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 yeah the yeah. peace of mind for just, her too, just peace of mind for her, and like yeah, like so I I obviously like would always validate her and be like yeah these were just previous things but i feel like it's it's good to just release and get off obviously off my notebook <laughs> but, uh, yeah but you know the bigger meaning we talk about the bigger meaning all the time yeah it's to support other people who might be going through it. yeah you know i've healed from those yeah and i think just the idea that she knows that and then i'm not constantly like thinking about this like oh, i just wrote this song about my ex that yeah I just have to think about how much I hate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. That's the biggest thing is like 90% of what I'm talking about, even on this show. Yeah, I give in the, like real life updates, but like a lot mm-hmm. of the stuff I wrote three years ago yeah. or about people from high school, like random mm-hmm. stupid things like to me that I forget happened until I'm like, oh my God, like whenever you wrote this down, when I thought about this, like last year, like, that was a dope idea. Let's talk about it. It's still yeah. relevant. And yeah. it's not at all meaning I'm still in that mindset at all. No. And a lot of the stuff I've healed from yeah. mo- like years already. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I know what you mean. It's super important. It's to almost remember. like I have dissociated from the feeling yeah. of the song, but I'm now like in in like the mood of oh we got to make it catchy, hook uh-huh. and, like, and then put it out there for people to resonate. Like mm-hmm. I've completely dissociated from like all those previous things, yeah. um, in songs and stuff like that because I've healed from it. Yeah. So it's it's nothing more than just a song to me. Yeah, but I think it's so important to validate her in this, like my partner in this, yeah. because obviously I think like what she has to say is so relevant. Yeah, and I don't want to like overstep if I like write this song. Like I would, uh, I have my own boundaries that I would never cross. Like for like writing specifically, like things like that happen in uh-huh. previous relationships. Yeah, more like I was in love with this person. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would never write about that. Yeah. <laughs> that- <laughs> No, <laughs> marry it now. <laughs> yeah, but she knows she has a song coming. Aww. Oh, so. that's so cute. <laughs> You're like, she's so, like, not me being her muse. Yeah. Really? <laughs> no, so like, obviously, like, it's all worth it, you know. So. Yeah, there's yeah, and you have to, you can't just post an album of twelve thousand love songs. Like, no. that's cute, but it's sadly not as relatable, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and people like the tea, they like the drama, they like the sadness, yes. like. It's more relatable for people to be like, oh, I just went through a breakup or like, oh, I just went through something like this rather than I'm in, like in love era right now. Yeah, I'm in my happiness era. What do you a, see that? It's unfortunate because I, so I like follow Olivia Rodrigo. She's one of my queens and mm-hmm. she has like two her two main albums out. Yes. And I didn't realize until she has an album. I'm sorry. She has a song on her. Um, what's it called? Oh, my God. I can't think of it. The like. When there's a few extra songs that they add onto their album, I think the newest it, one I re- listen well, to not is the like Vampire or something. Not the song itself, but uh, what is it called? When an artist, when uh, when an artist t- puts out like a limited edition or something. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. What's it? Where they have extra extended? song extended? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the extended album. Yeah, she has an extended album for her newest. Um, Usually LPs, I think. Okay, but whatever it was she on her like more low key album posted mm-hmm. her first like love song. And it's oh. very, like, angsty still, and it's very, like, rocky, cutesy, mm-hmm. and I loved it, because I'm like, oh, my God, like, Liv is in love! Like, yes, I feel like I, like, yes. like I know her, I'm happy for her, I'm proud of her, like, whatever, because all of her songs are just so sad and so relatable, unfortunately, yes. but, like, so real, but having her first love song was cute, because it's like, oh, my gosh, like, sh- but notice it's not on her main album, mm-hmm. because it's sadly not the most re- relatable. Yeah. And if I said the title right now, I bet 90% of people would never have heard that song before. Do you know right. what I mean? Yeah. But it's just like, because I follow her, I look into that. But like mm-hmm. you were saying, you want to have the love songs and the sweet songs, and that's amazing. Yeah. But unfortunately, in the cu- world we live in, <laughs> pop culture, social media, all that stuff, mm-hmm. people don't care as much about the lovey. They want to know about the tea. I know. Yes. That's why I like really dived into what I got going on, mm-hmm. like with my previous songs and yeah. stuff like that. But yeah, I think it's it's almost like I'm building a story, if you will, yeah. like uh, of, of what I've personally gone through. So it's like I'm talking about past stuff. Before I'm talking about current. Yes, 100%. And that's so fine. it's almost like that's unfortunately the order. Yeah. That's so. how, I mean, for me too, when I started, I spent probably the first season only talking about past stuff. Yeah. Also, it was too close to home. I'm, I'm going on dates and then I don't want to know the next week it's about them. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I can't <laughs> yeah. be that obvious. Report back, guys. Yeah. It wasn't how we thought it would go. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, like, now I'm in a space where I'm more comfortable and confident within myself to, like, be more, like, present day. Good, but yeah. especially the first season, it was so weird and new and the amount of texts and just weird questions I got and, like, yeah. check-ins and weird people who came back after years, like, wondering what the 
con like the T as like we said. Mm-hmm. So like I kind of grew from that, and now I have much more of like a a gauge of what I want to put out there, and I'm comfortable if it's more modern or not modern. I guess more time sensitive. We are literally in a T era. Everything like, is what people. Everything. Yeah. Like, it's just the the view hungry people. Yeah. And uh, yeah, because it, it's it's what chases the virality. Yeah. And stuff. The drama. I was like, dang, is this my freaking U-Haul got like 50,000 views on TikTok? Probably. I, like, I, I did a little bit of a story chat. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, and that's great. And that works. Yeah. Um, With your long distance relationship, how, how long have you been together? How has this yeah. came about? How's it going being long distance? Like what things did you have to kind of figure out? Yeah. Well, so basically we've known each other for I believe it's eight months. It's almost nine months, okay. but it's been eight months. And then we we started dating about five months ago. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> cool. It's been really great. Like, I truly feel like... Oh, it's going to sound so cliche. My other half. No, I know. I know, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like, I've never met someone who I feel, like, so comfortable and confident with. And, Good. like, I can genuinely have real conversation with. Yeah. And it's sustainable. It's like we both bounce off each other. Uh-huh. And this is like our first like experience like this. So we're both like learning it too. And uh-huh. like we uh, we always like make time for each other. Good. Always. Yeah. Like in what, whatever way it can be. Like, and it's like, how do you make it interesting and stuff like that? Like the phone calls turn into FaceTimes, turn into watch party, movie nights, Aww. like turn into game nights, like. You know, things yeah. like that. Or she'll FaceTime when she's out with friends sometimes. I'll say hi, you know. It's like, yeah, the check-ins and stuff. Yeah. She does a really great job of making me feel included. Aw. Like a lot of that, so. That's but very she's sweet. All, she's, I have nothing but great, great stuff to say about her. All love. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, that's so cute. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm happy for you, and I'm happy Thank to you. hear you're having a healthy experience. Thank you. That's yes, important so. to experience, yeah. for sure. What do they say? Like, don't, don't stop your girlfriend's. Or wait, don't let your girlfriend stop you from finding your wife. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, that is so funny. Well, I love that for you. That's yeah, very exciting. Yeah. And that that support is important for sure. Yeah, no, actually, it's crazy because after each release, she does like this like small little gift item. That's Aww. like my release theme. Like I have this like chain right here. Right? Okay. And that's kind of what Better All My Own was about, is releasing the chains of feelings. Oh, my gosh. To situation and breaking free. Yeah. You know, liberating from that toxic environment uh-huh. and stuff like that. So, like, she got me this That's so right cute. Yeah, she got me a U-Haul card. Oh, my God, <laughs> not the U-Haul card. That's clever, though. That's yes. a little momentum mm-hmm. yeah. to remind you. That's so cute. I love yeah, that. Yeah, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, if someone is supporting me this great, then I'm doing the right thing. Yeah, and you're with the right person. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's awesome. That's yeah. so exciting. I know. I know. I see you. <laughs> you're like, oh, bashful. Yeah. It's so cute. <laughs> I love that. Okay, I did have a question in the same realm quickly. Do, have you, okay, obviously you're new to the industry. And is your girlfriend out of the industry? She is out of the industry. Okay. Have yeah. you found that's worked better, do you think? Or do you think yeah. like do you have to like teach her like industry lingo or like experiences? Or like have you dabbled with anyone in the industry? I haven't really had like an experience where I had to like teach her what it was okay. like. She kinda just like understood because like uh things like I'll, I'll have to stay up late sometimes just writing yes or like you know i used to have a lot of like virtual sessions that just uh-huh. like conflicted with the times that we would call uh-huh. and i'd be like oh, sorry this is one of the nights but you know it was unfortunate but we understood it was for the the greater good no literally <laughs> yeah yeah but, um, <laughs> also she wasn't too mad because at the end of the day i'd have a demo to send to her for the yeah update. and it's still exciting like, oh my god wait Okay, maybe it was okay that I waited like this long. Uh, <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. But no, she she backs me com- like a hundred percent. Okay, and stuff like that. And um, I don't like it's a perfect dynamic for Good. me. Good. Like, like she's out of the industry, but she's so involved at the same time. Like she just she knows music. Like, okay. Music is something that like really actually connected us two together. Okay. Um, not in the industry wise, but she's just always listening and always creating playlists and stuff like okay. that. And like, so she's got a really, really great music taste. Okay. <laughs> well, then that works yeah. well. So it is a it good works balance. Great. Well, yeah. Sometimes there could be too much if they're both in the industry or there could be imbalances yeah. or like jealousies and insecurities. So that's, it, that's yeah. good that it's working. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, well, I, yeah, I don't think I would ever do anything that would result in, like, jealousy or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, of like, course. I don't know. I, I feel like my music videos are good enough not to involve another person or anything like that. Like, I would just keep it very simple and very, like, straightforward. Yeah. And she's actually filmed my music videos. That uh, If you've oh. seen my YouTube. Yeah. She's filmed, like she filmed not a u-haul like that oh was my gosh her yeah. that's so cool yeah it was off her camera she's like a girl in film oh my god slay yeah, literally i was like okay. i love that that's how supportive she is yeah so like, and that helps i have that like i'm like wait yeah this is this works great like, yeah um Aww. yeah i feel like if roles were, were reversed and maybe she was in this industry I might have a different view or maybe I'll respect it a little more because I'll be like, oh, well, let me take a lot of notes like on. Yeah, you like learn. But I feel like you other. can learn that through friendships. Totally. I have a lot of friendships that I've I've gained from social media that are people in the industry. And sometimes having someone separate is important to like make you keep yes. keep yourself grounded keep and accountable and everything. Yeah. 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 For sure. That's awesome. But what, yeah, what we have for sure works. Yeah. So. Good. <laughs> I think it'd be too conflicting schedule-wise. Oh, yeah. If you guys were both full so out. like. Oh, you're recording a, a song, too. Okay, got it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, what advice do you have for people who are in... Okay, you talked about a lot of people coming into the industry. Yes. So how would you say, what is, like, the biggest thing you've learned in terms of, like, balance with yourself as a human, your relationships, friends, family, um, girlfriend, and your industry experiences? And if you work in industry, like, wait, wh- how, what have you learned with balance? I want to probably say two messages out of this. Okay. The first one being um, make music for yourself and not for other people. Okay. Because it's going to skew your authenticity to make music for other people. And you're going to just, like, lose yourself, I feel. But, like, being grounded and being authentic and writing music that you truly believe in, regardless if you care if other people do, it'll go a longer way. Because, like, people people don't listen to you just to listen to you. They have a reason. Uh-huh. And it could be the lyrics or it could be following your story. Mm-hmm. So be authentic as possible and make music for yourself that feels good i love that that makes a lot of sense that would be my first my second is don't be afraid to be you and i know that's like definitely like oversaturated like people hear it all the time (laughs) no it makes sense but for the longest time i mean me being queer like i've had to hide myself for so many years of my life that and like had to like think of oh you know i need to change myself i need to change my beliefs i need to like hide myself whatever when i started being openly comfortable with being myself and Mm -hmm. being in my skin it allowed me to be a more authentic version of myself yeah and allowed me to create music and lyrics that are so true to myself and like just tie the story together yeah so yeah that makes sense don't be afraid to be yourself yeah don't like change yourself for the industry don't like think like you need like this prop to like go big okay yeah yeah yeah, no, it's it's really just comes down to you. And I'm sure being yourself and being able to express yourself and after, like, you find yourself and everything also yeah. brings you to the people who want to support and uplift the real version of you. Yes. Not the one that you have to put up because you think that's what society or people around you want you to, to do or to be. Yeah. So that's important to find that community. They don't support what you do. They support why you do it. Yeah, that so makes I sense. That's, like the that's most a great point. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's like, why Why is she doing this? Okay, wait, let me go back and listen to the lyrics. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and it's more important and impa- impactful. It's a little too relatable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah. love that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That's awesome. Is there anything you want to talk about in terms of your experience being queer? Um, I haven't had anything insane other, other than, like, just constantly like gaining more supporters daily Mm -hmm. and being able to be heard by more people yeah that's why i love i mean people like love hate social media yeah like the side that i really love is who i'm able to connect with Mm -hmm. like daily totally it's new people every day but it's always people who i feel like I built this for you page brick by brick. <laughs> like, like, Handcrafted. <laughs> yeah, that's so but funny. I just love connecting with people like that. And I surround myself with people like that. I follow people on social media who are also queer and independent. And uh-huh. just so I can understand, okay, well, what 
can I get a scope of what what it's like to be like this? Um, I think like Zolita was a big one. Okay. I, I first like followed her, um, kind of in the realm of like Fletcher. Like she knows. Like, yeah. She knows, like mutuals with Fletcher and stuff uh-huh. like that. But I got to see her journey from like first song to like now. And I'm like so cool. She's openly queer. Like her first music video was her and a girl. Slay. <laughs> <laughs> you know why that song blew up? Oh <laughs> my god! I love no, that. But, yeah. Um, I just love when people are like not afraid to hide it. Yeah. It's like cool. Like it, it just allows me to be more confident. Good. In myself. That's important. Yeah. And then you're doing that for people the way those artists have done that for you. Yes. You know, which yeah. is so important. Yeah. And that goes back to probably your why as well. Yeah. And I take like inspiration from different artists. I, I think like a lot of people do maybe. Mm-hmm. Like I choose this artist for this or this artist for this. Yeah. I have a different purpose for it. I really like took a lot of inspiration for Sam Smith and like okay. the soulful voice, but yeah. also the messaging behind being queer, being uh-huh. gay, being you know in this industry, and but also having such a powerful voice. Yeah, goes a long way. But then like I all like I supported Melanie Martinez for the longest time okay. too, because she's so creative when it comes to sound and visual. Yes, in senses like. Like, she really wants her audience to be able to feel and mm-hmm. see exactly how she envisioned it. Mm-hmm. Very artsy. Very cutesy. Very yeah. Weird. As I say, <laughs> you're going to finish that off. <laughs> I love that. Well, that's yeah. important. And I'm glad that you are using your platform for the, the bigger picture as well, yeah. which is awesome. And I'm sure you're touching many people, especially with yeah. all the content you're creating and all the different platforms and different audiences, mm-hmm. which is nice to see what works and what um what people want to see which is important yeah and that's that's definitely the goal i think another goal of mine is just like reaching people that are outside of maybe my target audience yeah and like just maybe creating some allyship out of mm-hmm. it like, totally yeah broadening you know, like, that yeah because i think it's equally as important it's like okay this is a very very small niche group of artists mm-hmm. like like lesbian women who create music <laughs> but it's like it goes so far beyond that. Like, yes. obviously, we're all talking about relationships. Let's be real. Yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent. But like, how do I? How do I? How can I be unique in all of this? Totally. And how can I embrace myself fully? Yeah. And you know, I do want to like maybe I have niche specific music, which is that the U-Haul song uh-huh. and other music and stuff. But I also want to dive into maybe relationship music or other types of music that supports just about anyone too. Yeah. I'm not just trying to create my own little cult or maybe i am (laughs) (laughs) if you do you do (laughs) but no like a relationship is a relationship so that's all very can be very generalized too if you do want to make it more broad and regardless it's speaking to many people who need to hear straight people you haul so yeah a (laughs) hundred (laughs) percent that's so funny (laughs) well you guys are getting married after three months What's going on there? <laughs> what is happening? Yeah, <laughs> and that is very valid. Um, what? Okay, so now just you as a human, Kelly, what advice or what was the biggest lesson you've learned in life so far? Whoa. Like just broad? Just whatever you want. Whatever that means to you. If it scares you, do it. Oh, I love if it that. Scares you, do it. It applies to my music. It applies to my life. There's so many, so many like quotes and things that I follow. It's mm-hmm. like the reason why you're scared is because you know you're meant for something bigger, and like that bigger thing is terrifying, and it mm-hmm. seems almost out of reach, but you can't it's see so it, possible. But there's a plan. Yeah, yeah, I love that so much. Yeah, that's amazing, and that works for any any industry, any career, any, anything, at anything all. in human life yeah. that people experience. So I think people get caught up on the fear. And that's why they don't do it. But yeah. People don't realize that the failure is what it takes to actually get somewhere. And honestly, the fear of not doing it for me is more scary of like regretting it or regretting yeah. not doing it. Mm-hmm. And you never know what you missed out on. Mm-hmm. The unknown, like you said, or like way earlier. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I'm like, sometimes it scares me, like knowing that like pretty vulnerable music is out there. I'll wake up with like a gut feeling. I'm like, am I doing the right thing? Uh huh. But I am because then I'll get like a DM on TikTok that's like, oh, my God, I just like listened and streamed to your song. Yeah. You have no idea what type of situation I was just in that, mm-hmm. that this song helped me. Those little validations. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's exactly what the point is. Yeah, that feeling yes. is like elating. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. I love that. Um, well, yeah. I think this is coming close to an end. Do you have any thoughts <laughs> or questions for me? Or anything else that you want to put out there? What's your biggest life lesson? Um... 
I feel like it a lot changes throughout life and everything, but I think the biggest thing is similar to taking the risks, like no mm. risk, no reward. True. It's one thing I, I've been more in that mindset of lately, of just taking the risk, going full out, worst case, just start all over. Like, you can always, like, restart. That's what's happening. That's what, yeah. yeah, exactly. So I think that's where I'm at now. Like, my wallpaper, like, everything is there. You're just, like, do it full out, and whatever happens is meant to happen. If it doesn't work out, something better was waiting for you, or life had another pl- path for you. Mm-hmm. But also, I believe in that it will work out, and then you take it from there. That's so, great. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. The power of manifestation and affirmations. Yeah. Kind of daily. Dude, I, I so, like, so believe in that. Like, yeah. totally. It's how my whole life has come. Even this podcast, I manifested it two really? years ago. Yeah, I wrote down onto oh. the next podcast in 2023 or 2022. Wow. And then within a year, it came up, and I didn't even realize I wrote it down. Like, I forgot because it was That's so long incredible. ago. That's Yeah. That's a post-worthy moment. <laughs> that is a post-worthy <laughs> moment. I have to go back. I have it on my phone Once and on my notebook. Once you reach that 100K... Dude, yeah, that's what I have to tell where it it's began. Gonna happen. <laughs> once it happens, yes, once Speak it happens, it it's it's already in the process. Totally, yeah. yeah. And we'll come back for part two once we both reach it. Yes, <laughs> please, <laughs> please, and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah. Well, Kelly, do you want to plug all your socials? I will add them as well. Yeah, but yeah. You can reach me at TikTok and Instagram, which are where I'm most most uh, lively on uh, at Kelly underscore underscore Maxwell. Yeah. There you go, Kelly underscore underscore yeah. Maxwell. Yep. And then I have YouTube and Facebook, but I'm not really on there. <laughs> I'm trying to build up my YouTube, though. Yeah. <laughs> go to my YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then where are your songs streaming? Spotify. Um, well, I, I have them pretty much anywhere. Okay. Mainly Spotify, yeah. Apple Music, Tidal Wave, Deezer. Amazon, all the literally all the things. Good, yeah. yeah. So you guys have no excuse. You have to listen. You have to. There's literally you have to be everywhere. forced to heal. Don't avoid <laughs> it. <laughs> forced to heal. Oh my <laughs> gosh, that's hilarious. <laughs> that is so funny. I love that so much. <laughs> yep. um, well, Kelly, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for being here yeah. and spreading your your love and wisdom. Absolutely. Um, you all know the drill. Like, yeah. comment, subscribe, share, repost, tell your friends, tell your family, and let's continue to be a part of this journey together yeah. so and there's more music coming so. yes i will be post i'll like share stuff too as things go on because you'll be like cool no you're a new character yeah. unlocked <laughs> on the pod <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so don't forget like please give kelly all the love and oh, support definitely <laughs> yeah absolutely thank, thank you <laughs> just plugging each other okay <laughs> please and thank you lots of love <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> well you know what's what's happening now so i will see you when we are on to the next episode next week bye, bye.